Great to have you back here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're moving straight into the major news stories making headlines this morning. And uh, Jide Johnson, uh, Chief Lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, is uh, joining us. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. Good morning Thanks to for our joining viewers us. in diaspora and in Nigeria. All right. Let's start with the Punch newspapers this morning and see what uh, stories we can find over there. Uh, the big one that you can see on your screen says, Governors beg federal government to postpone $2.1 billion support repayment. CBN kicks. NEC falls to Basaki says, 60 billion naira not printed to shore up March allocation. And we can also find on the punch, uh, financial institutions will fund 1.8 trillion naira COVID-19 stimulus package, says the federal government. Nigeria fears arms influx over Idris Debi's death. And presidency battles to save Pantami. Reps plan debate. But Abia Mila, Song Wolu, Adibanjo, others extol Odumakin's virtues. And uh, also, Nigeria desperately needs investment to recover, says NASG. Juson Adamant, a CGN backs judiciary workers' strike. And also, Masob rejects UK asylum offer, says it's a ploy to stop Biafra. We can also find uh, on the punch this morning, stakeholders back Senate's move to upgrade Yabatek and Ilaro Poli to Varsities. I think those are the big, uh, the uh, very relevant ones on the punch this morning. On the daily independence, Chad crisis may worsen insecurity in Nigeria. That's according to the federal government. On the daily independence, he goes on to say uh, the federal government beefs up security around border areas, says separatist agitations bleeding country. And Buhari meets northern governors, vows to end insecurity in region. Still on the daily independence, above the headline, presidency backs Pantami, accuses telecommunications of a smear campaign. Uh, Lagos to generate $10 billion in agric investment by 2025. That's according to Son Wolu. Gunmen kidnap 18 passengers in Oyo. Herdsmen kill six in Benue. Forex restriction. Nigeria spends $6.1 billion yearly on wheat importation. Labor declares strike in Kaduna over sack of 4,000 workers. Ohaneze condemns arrest of Igbo youths by army. Bajabiamila, Sonwolu, Adebanjo, Amosun, Obi, Mimiko, others honor Odumaki. And the fair fair leader here saying it will be difficult to replace Yinka Odumaki. Nigeria collapsing. Pray for it. Pray for politicians, says Peter Obi. And Jusun here is telling the CJN we won't suspend strike. Those are the stories on the Daily Independent. All right, the Nigerian Tribune comes up next. Uh, child stealing. I made 800,000 naira selling babies, says a suspect. Sells off girlfriend's child for 300,000 naira. Also, strike continues until demands are met. And that's from Jusun and uh, Passan. Insist the judiciary fund must be deducted directly from source uh, by AGF. And um, also alleged link to terrorist groups. Buhari's government stands behind Pantami. And we can also see this morning, Nigeria is bleeding. That's from the defense minister. Lagos targets $10 billion investment in agric in the next five years. And the drama as imported American cow breaks loose at Lagos airport. Not sure how that's... <laughs> how that happens. Yeah. We can also find reps to probe alleged trade in human organs put at $1.2 billion annually. All right, uh, those are the ones on the Tribune this morning. On the Guardian newspaper, Southeast farmers score Anchor Borough's program low, blames failure on late arrival of impute and herdsmen attack. And CBN, not responsible for farmers' failure, says Apex Bank official. Chad on edge for Derby's burial as rebels threat in advance. NEC disowns Obasaki on 60 billion naira currency printing crisis. Why Jusun strike cannot be faulted by CJN. 60% of Nigerians lack access to smartphones and digital devices. Lagos unveils five-year Greek roadmap and Ohanese alleges massive arrest of Igbo youth in the southeast. Uh, those are the stories we're looking at this morning on the top newspapers. Uh, Mr. Jide Johnson, thanks again for joining us.
Yeah, it's a pleasure to be with you. Good morning. All Good right. Morning. So there's, there's so many top stories here on the front pages of the newspapers. I think one of the biggest here is um, the one by the presidency, the press release we saw uh, signed by Gaba Shehu saying, we stand by Pantami. Despite all the Pantami must resign, Pantami must go hashtags uh, we've seen on social media and all the evidence that you know have come to light in the past few days. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, Mr. Johnson? Well, I think the first, first and foremost, is that the presidency is the federal government in support of Pantami. I think if um, government is given a back into the minister, I think such statement should be signed by the Minister of Information. That's my thought on that, if you want to put the full weight of the government behind Pantomime. But if it's been signed by Gaba Shield, it means it's still coming from the presidency. And the presidency is just a component of the government. So we see the presidency back Pantomime. Well, the presidency in the first instance did not do its own due diligence. They are done their own due diligence. Someone like Isa Pantomime should not be a minister in the Federal Republic of Nigeria because his views, his thoughts, his actions in the past does not show someone that has faith and belief in the corporate existence of Nigeria, in the unity of Nigeria, in the diversity of Nigeria. So such a person shouldn't be uh, a minister of the Federal Republic. But we are, we are who we are and we are where we are, and where government, where the presidency will be backing, we saw our presidency backed you shouldn't surprise anybody in the So, despite opposition to con continual um, existence of Magu, Ibrahim Magu as EFCC chairman, opposition from the National Assembly, refused for his confirmation. The presidency still stuck with him until there was a move within the presidency to probe Magu, and that's how Magu was, 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 was removed. And we've seen a lot of force powers from the part of this particular administration trying to bring in people that have questionable character or questionable um, actions in the past into government. Remember the former attempt to reinstate the former um, this guy in charge. I remember his name later. This guy in charge of, of pension from Borno State attempt by the government to instead. I don't know what hold does Pantami have over the presidency, over the president, that this person with a questionable character in the past and I hold a view that does not believe in the in the in the corporate existence of a country like Nigeria, that does not believe in the diversity of Nigeria to still be a minister. As far as I'm concerned, it's like we are running an animal kingdom. We are by some animals are equal, but some animals are more equal. Than, than the other, it doesn't really matter whether he had those views 10 years ago, why his actions, words, why his words, statements matched up with actions based on what he has said in threatening the corporate existence of Nigeria, institutions or organs of government in, 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 in Nigeria. And I think the most honorable thing the president should have done is to have excused him and probably go through a period of rehabilitation, just like they rehabilitated Boko um, Haram. Boko Haram, repentant Boko Haram, and then we we'll talk about it. Once right. religion is involved, it seems as if this president will turn, this presidency, this government will turn a kick loose to it. Even the Speaker of the House of Rep did not even allow for a debate on the matter, which will have a discourse. But you can send NSAS protesters, people that are protesting, you could, you could get them arrested, you could get them prosecuted, you could get people protesting in Abuja just for mere protesting. A, a, Ex expressing their fundamental um, rights as provided for in the Constitution. But someone that has an extremist view, that has a view that is abhorrent, a view that shouldn't be seen in a modern society, is, is prevailing over our communication communication structure, our national communication structure, uh, 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 the, the apparatus of, of communication system in Nigeria. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. It's, it's unbelievable. All right. People uh, left, right, and center across ages have spoken against this, this, this character. Well, let's wait and see how it goes. All but right. it shows how this presidency has taken public opinion. Because we believe public opinion shapes public policy. But the reverse is the case when it comes to this presidency.
All right, let's also, it's still talking of uh, insecurity uh, issues. There's uh, a story on the punch this morning. It says Nigeria fears arms influx after uh, Idris, Idris Debi's death. Uh, we've had, you know, similar conversation, you know, with regards to Libya, where it was the, the, the Libyan crisis was blamed for the influx of arms into Nigeria. Um, I, I'm not sure if we've been able to change uh, the level of control we have of our arms influx in the last couple of years. And now we're having a similar conversation after the death of Idris De uh, Debi. What are your thoughts? Well, we have um, different types of firearms in Nigeria, whether it is dead or not, is dead or not does not um, change anything. We have seen how arms, seized, arms have been seized by the custom. I think it was a regular feature when um, the custom boss Ali became the custom boss in 20, 2015, and then becomes a regular feature that we see in the media that this catch of arms was seized from the court and the papa court, uh, which this one was intercepted on the road. So government shouldn't give us any excuse with respect to with respect to the death of Idris Debi that it will lead to arm influx into Nigeria. The arms, whatever arms, long creation to eat firearms, they are in this country where do kidnappers get firearms from? Where do <clears throat> Don't forget, we spoke about this thing last week, where we said that the state governor bought one at, uh, in, in, in the state armory, they found 1,000 AK 47. 1,000 AK 47. What do they want to use it for? So, if they are just providing an excuse to, 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 to excuse themselves from their ineptitude, from, from failure of government to do what it's supposed to do, we said our border is closed. So, why should we be worried if the customs, if the immigrations, and all other DSS and other agencies of government are able to do what they are supposed to do. We shouldn't be worried whether something happened in charge and we have a consequent effect on Nigeria. In charge already, there's, there's an insurgency. There's, there are, there's a rebel group trying to take over government. But the insurgency that we have in Nigeria is not insurgency. What we have in Nigeria is terrorism because you have people killing, killing and maiming Nigerians and proponents of such, we call them repentant. They are, they are they repentant, we rehabilitate them, and they go back to become stronger, guarding intelligence, and causing more havoc on, on, on us. So, okay. M Mr. Johnson, still, still, yes. still talking about security. Um, we, we heard when the news broke um, just yesterday uh, that uh, the United Kingdom has granted asylum to members of IPOB and MASOB. And how the federal government reacted to this, saying this was an insult to the Nigerian government, you know, and the UK, you know, responding to that, saying they granted the asylum based on, you know, the investigations that, you know, these agitators had been persecuted by the government. But a response now, you know, has come to light by Massab. They say they reject the asylum offer by the UK, saying the UK actually persecuted, you know, you know, the people of Biafra when they were agitating back in 1967, and that they're plotting with the Nigerian government to stop the agitations of Biafra, that what they want is a, a referendum on Biafra and not asylum. Uh, what, what's your take on that? Well, um... Even in the 60s, the British government, it would be out of place for the British government, having brought Nigeria together as a unit in 1914 with the amalgamation of the Northern and Southern Protectorate to form what we call the country Nigeria and giving us independence in 1960. For them, less than 10 years to support the breakaway of that, of that nation. So you can understand the perspective of the British in 1967 to 1970. However, this is 2021, and if the British government is offering an olive branch to the Biafran, thinking that there is a need for those that are agitated for self um, self self determination, that they will, they will provide protection for them. I think the Biafran agitators, hip hop and massive, should have a rethink. Um, don't don't forget that even some of some commentators, Nigerians, have said that the greatest mistake that ever happened to this country was the 1914 amalgamation, bringing. Um, parts of the country that have the similar attributes, bringing them together to form to form a nation called, called Nigeria. And some of us have argued this fact that, look, the creation of Nigerians, were Nigerians involved in this creation? Was there any referendum to say that, okay, this protectorate, the Northern Protectorate and the Southern Protectorate, 
would you people like to be one? We have never had a referendum to say that, okay, we want to continue as a nation. And the, 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 the more we run away from it, the more we are playing the ostrich. There's a need for us to have a referendum to say that do we still want to continue as a nation? Do we still want to operate the system of government that we are operating? Do we still want to operate the kind of system of government that we are operating? So there is a need for us to do that. As a nation, Nigeria is a contraction. A contraction that is by, created by an executive act by the colonial government and that has been maintained by decree. We have not sat down to come up with our own constitution because every constitution that we have seen were, were a product of decree, whether the 1960 constitution, which came up from the Ibadan and London Conference of 1957 and um, the Ibadan Conference, London Conference of 1957 and that one in Ibadan 1959, or the various constitution we have used since that time till date, 1979 constitution, the 1992, and then the 1990, they were a product of decree. It was a product of meat, and if the foundation is destroyed, there's nothing the righteous can do. You can you cannot build on anything, you cannot be on anything. So there is the need for us as a nation to have a referendum. Do we still want to continue as a nation? Because what is Nigeria was a product of the imagination of somebody, and there was a contraption that was created. And if we begin to if we still continue on that platform, we are living under an illusion. We have security challenge. We have economic challenge. What is the exchange rate of a dollar to a naira? In 1984, Muhammad Buhari, General Muhammad Buhari, was the president of Nigeria in 1984. You don't need visa to travel to anywhere in the world. You don't need visa. You don't need visa to travel to most part of the world. Nigerians were checking out of this country. Government came up with a camp, public campaign. Andrew, please don't check out to stop Nigeria from living in droves. But this is, this is 2021. President Muhammad Buhari is the president of Nigeria. Fast forward to 2021. You need visa to travel to most countries in the world. Now, Nigerians are checking out in droves. All you need to do is to go to Ghana. Take a, an executive bus going to Ghana. 70 to 80% of those people in those bus are, are people working in the medical industry. They are going to Ghana to take an exam because they want to migrate to other to, to, to other countries. Which way for Nigeria? I said something on a on a program during the course of the way. Let's look at the second stanza of our national anthem. What's the Nigerian national dream? We don't have a dream, we don't have a focus. What's the hope for an average Nigerian? What's the hope for an average Nigerian youth in this? Oh God of creation, direct our noble cause. What's the noble cause of this nation? Guide our leaders, right? Because they will always be taken wrong decision. The decision by the president, is it the right decision for Nigeria or is it the selfish right? Is the interest of Pantami, for example, greater than the interest of the whole of Nigeria? Is well, it greater? Jude, Jude Johnson. And that's, and that's the challenge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I mean, you're going to continue with the same uh, line of thought. I just wanted to, you know, ask um, uh, your thoughts on why does it seem like we're afraid of having this conversation that you just mentioned? The conversation on a referendum, the conversation on whether we truly want to remain together. Does it seem like Nigeria as a country is scared of that conversation? Nigeria does not have democratic governance. What we have is civilian. We shouldn't mistake it. What we have, every aspect of our nation is still militarized. And don't forget, we are unfortunate. Unfortunate in the sense that when we transited from military administration to civilian administration in 1999, we moved to get a former military head of state to become the president in the person of General Lucia And in 2015, when we have transitioned from one party to another party, unfortunately for us again, we have a former military head of state in the president of General Muhammad Buhari to be the first beneficiary of a transition from one party to another party in a democratic experiment from 1999 to 2015. So no matter how hard it rains, a leopard is a leopard. The rain cannot wash off the skin of the leopard. Look, look at the characters of these people that have been mentioned. These are the people that have been fortunate to have ruled this nation, even in a democratic experiment, for more than six years now. Obasanjo used eight years, and there's the, the likelihood or not likelihood of value is, 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 
is, is not is out of the discussion because he won his second term. And so in our democratic experience, in less than 24 years, we are within 24 years, we'll have 16 years of it be headed by a former military head of state. Someone would say, so tell me, are we practicing democracy or we are practicing civilian rule? So there's a difference between a democracy and if it's in a democracy, there will be an open debate. The Speaker of the House of Rep will allow that debate. The Senate President will come up with, with a statement that will stop Pantami for us to be pantomized. In the last one week, we have been pantomized. And I think that will be a new, a new word in our nomenclature that the, the word pantomize, that okay. you have a conversation over the actions of somebody that should not be in in public governance and they still be in. So the federal government is trying to pantomize us. We are changed. We are changed. Uh, right. It was what they made it. All right, Mr. Gina Johnson. Past, if someone should go to jail, listen, I, I think... listen, just give me a minute. All right. If someone is convicted of a crime in Nigeria, can he be elected into any office? Can he get employment? Can he be employed? To it? And so you have someone that has made inflammatory statements. People have not even made such statements. They have been invited by the TSS. All right, Mr. Johnson, um, someone else made statements, but uh, just like the pandemic situation, we're seeing the government, you know, dispelling it and saying that's not true and it never happened. And we know to Basaki, he had claimed that the governor of Edo State he had claimed that 60 billion naira was printed to augment the March revenue. And uh, it's, you know, generated controversy, you know, in recent time. You know, Basaki had accused the federal government of financial recklessness, saying, why would they do that? But we had the Minister of, you know, Finance say that that it didn't happen. But we had the CBN governor, Gordon Mephile, say, well, the government could print money to lend, to borrow. But uh, at the National Executive Council meeting yesterday on Thursday, they, they laid that to rest, saying that never happened and that wasn't true. Um, your thoughts on that before a wrap up of the press? When you have this, when you have conflicting statement from agencies of government, it shows you the direction and the coordination that exists within this administration. Um, it seems there are too many centers, um, and you're having things falling apart, and the center cannot cannot hold. Um, oh, you don't need rocket science to believe what on who to believe in terms of this. Um, back and forth argument between the governor of Edo State and the central bank governor and the federal government on the other. The other. All you need to do is to just get the price index of products. All you need to do is to go to the market. How much could 1,000 Naira buy for you? What could 1,000 Naira buy for you a month ago? And what could it buy for you now? What could it buy for you in February? And what could it have bought for you in, 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 in March? These are the things, and it's, it's very clear. We the inflation rate, like we discussed last week, was 18.1 percent. Basic economics will tell you that inflation happens in an economy when there is too much money pursuing fees. Too much money pursuing fees. So if you have too much money in the economy, where is the money coming from? Did we make money from our foreign exchange? And did we make more money from the sales of crude oil? Because we are a monoproduct economy. Or are we printing money to show up the shortfalls we are, we are making from our foreign exchange earnings? So it's very, very clear. You don't need, you don't need rocket science to understand that fact. And in order to do that, uh, you see the headline punch. Governors beg FG to postpone 2.1 billion support repayment. Why, government, why the government wants to collect that particular money? And CBN is saying, no, you have to collect that money back. Right. And so probably it's to use it to substitute what the governor of Edo State has said. And I think our governor should come out and either support what Obasek is saying or uh, be against what okay. Obasek is saying. But in a situation where you see all the governors always run to Abuja at the end of the month for them to do federal allocation, or all the governors, when they have issues like the 19 state governors, went to meet the president yesterday in Abuja that about security issues. You should know that we are probably our head needs to be examined. All right, Why Jay should Johnson. 19 governors go to meet the president in Abuja? Or should it be the president? Is it the president of Abuja or the president of the Federal Republic? All and right. we need, the we president need to should have been the one that should have gone, that should have taught all the states to see the situation of things in the state. When we had issues, that fire in Abuja, in, in Lagos State, the governor of Lagos State ran to Abuja, took the pictures to the president. When there was instance protest in Lagos, the governor of Lagos State went to Abuja to meet the president. Now, the security issue, in, we saw the picture, you see the picture in the National Newspaper. 
We saw the governor of Kano State. Thank you very much, uh, Lady Johnson. To beat the president. Can such a person question or confront the decision or engage in constructive agreement with the president? The governors are elected to represent their state. They are chief executive officer of the state. Same Thank thing you very with much. the president. Well, we need, we need to wrap it up here, uh, G.D. So Johnson. if you have such a situation, you see the kind of nation you are running. Yeah, we need to wrap up here. Thank you so much. Um, I think everyone is um, you know, feeling pleasure, about the same way the that you feel this morning. It's a uh, pleasure to be we must have that conversation. That yes, we do. Should we continue as the nation? Indeed, we indeed, Mr. Johnson. Thanks thank for, you very thanks much. For Friday with have us. a great weekend. All right. Um, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, uh, we'll be sharing with you what happened today in history uh, many years ago. Stay with us here on The Breakfast. <laughs>